TerraGamma Motor Control manages motor magnetizing current to provide optimum motion speed, power, and efficiency. It does this automatically without expert assistance. Hi, I'm Chris Cullen of TerraGamma Motor Control. In this video, I'll show you how automatic control of magnetizing current helps you get more out of your servo motor. A three-phase motor permits control of both the strength and the direction of voltage and current. Quadrature current produces torque, the force that moves the motor. Magnetizing current, also called direct current, changes the strength of the magnetic field. This also changes the voltage constant and the torque constant of the motor. An induction motor has no magnets and no inherent magnetic field, so you must always choose a value for the magnetizing current at which to operate. The value you choose has a large impact on motor performance. A permanent magnet motor, also called a brushless motor, usually operates with direct current equal to zero. However, applying a direct current can increase the speed range of the motor. This is often called field weakening. Magnetizing current control is complicated. That's why TerraGamma developed a controller to do it all for you, automatically and optimally. We'll start by automatically self-commissioning this induction motor. It's a standard high-speed washing machine motor. And we've mounted an optical encoder on the back, 2,000 counts per revolution. The rated motor speed is up to 380 hertz. That's 22,800 RPM. This is a high-speed motor. Rated voltage is up to 250 volts. We assume that's AC RMS. So we'll use 220 AC input to our servo drive. Rated current is 2 amps. Again, that's usually RMS. And the insulation class is F. Performing self-commissioning is very simple. We start the program, commission. Now we'll enter the numbers from the label. 2 amps RMS. We'll use the default overload, 200%. The peak speed, 380 hertz, insulation class F. That's all there is to it. Now we press start. TerraGamma self-commissioning automatically and autonomously identifies electrical, mechanical, and thermal models for the motor and load and designs closed-loop controllers. When complete, the resulting motion quality is usually excellent and needs little adjustment. That's it. Self-commissioning took slightly over 10 minutes. We'll give the configuration a name, and we'll set the in-position band to 5 encoder counts. After self-commissioning, you can start operating the motor immediately. I'll move point to point by two motor revolutions. We can see that the planned motion took 145 milliseconds. That's much slower than a brushless motor would be but this is a high inertia induction motor. The settling time is shown to be zero. How can that be? Let's look at a step plot. We can see that the plan motion time is 145 milliseconds, just like the recording window said. And here we can see that the position enters the five encoder count in position band as soon as the plan motion completes. That's zero settling time. It settles to one encoder count in about 36 milliseconds. So why is magnetizing current important? Let's open the iMag window. This top section shows the current magnetizing current. Self-commissioning set it to 1.4 amps. The maximum feasible velocity, however, is only about 8300 RPM. That's way below the motor limit. We can turn off monitoring and see as we vary current what the velocity can be. And there's 22,800, the motor limit. And we can see that the magnetizing current has to be much smaller in order to get there. Let's look at some relationships computed from the model that's automatically computed by self-commissioning. This plot shows direct current, that is magnetizing current, as a function of velocity. Here's the limiting velocity of 22,800 RPM. The green curves show the maximum and minimum feasible direct current. 
The red curve shows the direct current that results in maximum torque being available for any velocity. The blue curve shows the direct current that gives the maximum efficiency for no load operation. That is, when the motor is driving the load present during self-commissioning. Let's look at full load operation that uses the red curve for magnetizing current. Full load operation is what you want for spindle application, such as spinning a cutting tool in a machining center. The red curve shows shaft torque as a function of velocity. The green curve is net torque, subtracting friction and damping that self-commissioning measured. The net torque is available to drive an external load. The blue curve shows the shaft power. No load operation uses the no load curve for direct current. This might be, for example, driving a fan load. And so we look at the no load efficiency and power. The blue curve shows the shaft power versus velocity. And the green curve shows the efficiency. TerraGamma learns all this about your motor without being told. And so, of course, it uses that information to get the best motor performance possible. We've already seen that magnetizing current is set to 1.4 amps, and the iMag window tells us the top speed is 8300 RPM. The motion planner and servo, however, will dynamically set the current to accomplish what you want to do. Let's spin the motor to top speed. You can see that direct current was changed to 0.41 amps before starting the speed change. After stopping, it's back to the value best for holding position. You can specify magnetizing current for spinning in different ways. Maximum torque, maximum efficiency, or you can specify a fixed value. Let's try maximum efficiency and slow speed operation. We'll spin at 10 RPM. Note the very low position tracking error this implies very accurate speed control. For position control, you specify a fixed magnetizing current, and the iMag window can help you compute the value that provides the minimum motion time. High torque is usually the best choice for short moves because it gives the highest acceleration. However, a long move can be completed faster if velocity is higher, even at the cost of lower acceleration from lower torque. We can see that a two revolution move is fastest at a magnetizing current of 1.86 amps. But a 200 revolution move is fastest when the magnetizing current is smaller. Let's try this out. 200 revolutions. And we'll start with 1.86 amps. The motion time was 2.28 seconds. Now let's change this to 1.375. Here we can see the motion time has gone down to 1.96 seconds and the traverse speed was faster. The iMag window can also help optimize more complex motions. For example, you could specify an application script, such as a contouring motion. And you can select current script, and it will find that for this motion, the best magnetizing current is 0.47 amps. The magnetizing current model depends on bus voltage and is updated dynamically for measurements by the servo drive. This allows you to get the most out of the available voltage. So now I'll disconnect the drive from 220 volts and connect it to 110 volts AC. Now we'll start up again. And we can see the bus voltage is about 160 DC, about half what we had before. Can we still move? Let's find out. We'll get the iMag window. Let's try moving 200 revs. 
and we can, this says that we need much lower magnetizing current than before. So we'll try it out. 200 revs, enable control, let's go. Wow. That move took about the same amount of time as with 220, and the speed was about the same. The servo merely had to adjust the magnetizing current to compensate. Let's try spinning. The yellow color indicates the motion planner is not sure this is feasible. In fact, it thinks it isn't. So let's go to just as high as we can with 110 volts. With low voltage, it took quite a while to spin up to speed, but now it's there, controlling speed quite well. That's the Terragamma philosophy. Never fail. Do the best you can with the available resources. The same benefits apply to a permanent magnet motor. This is a Parker servo motor. It has a rated top speed of 5,000 RPM. And from the label, you can see that it's rated for 340 volts. I've attached a Variac to the servo drive input to show you how well TerraGamma can operate this motor using much lower voltage. Here you can see that servo bus voltage is about 90 volts DC. By default, magnetizing current for permanent magnet motors is set to zero. If we try to spin at maximum speed, We can see that the servo is only able to track to about 3700 RPM, and the position error, of course, is huge. Now let's enable automatic spin magnetizing current. We'll select full load torque. And we'll try to spin at top speed again. This time the servo tracks full speed accurately. You'll probably always use zero magnetizing current for position control, but even then, the motion planner minimizes motion time by setting velocity and acceleration to use the available voltage. I'm going to turn the voltage up so that it's now about 160 volts DC. Now let's step two motor revolutions. Here we can see that step time was 29.1 milliseconds and step and settle performance was excellent. Now I've reduced the bus voltage to about 90 volts. We'll step to motor revolutions again. You can see that the step time has gone from 29.1 to 43 milliseconds. That's the best that can be done with the limited voltage. Note, however, that the step and settle performance is still excellent. Using TerraGamma technology allows you to specify a motor with a higher voltage constant than you would if you required fixed specifications with a safety margin. This means you also get a higher torque constant, more force with less motor. You've just seen a brief overview of TerraGamma magnetizing current control. Thanks for watching.